Hey everybody, welcome to the Bridge of Transmissions. It is our first episode, and I am super glad to be here talking Rebels with everybody. My name's Kyle. I'm Corey. And we are really pleased to introduce to the Tumbling Saber team, <laughs> M. M, say hi. Who? I'm kidding. <laughs> Hi's too, hi to, you know, boring, basic. <laughs> you can say whatever you want to say. Just keep it clean. <laughs> yeah. Of course. So M comes to us from from Northern Ontario. We connected on Twitter and said, "You're a big re well." We realize that you're you're a huge Rebels fan. Oh yeah, huge. And I mean, it's a huge Star Wars fan in general. But you, Rebels really really scratches the itch for you. So we figured, you know what? Let's get M and part of the team here and help us uh, break down this final season of Rebels and beyond. We'll we'll. We have, we've got some plans for this here podcast, but we're going to start with Rebels. I also like uh, the fact that, I don't know, I don't know if we really want to talk about this, but uh, well, just you M's it up, age. So now we have to, right? Yeah, well, go. just M's age. Like, I oh, I geez. really ap appreciate a fresh <laughs> take on Star Wars. Like, uh, there's there's an age difference here, and um, which could provide new insight and new perspectives. So I'm I'm interested in that. Well, yeah, and you two are like two dads, so. <laughs> I told you I was the cool older brother. Uh, no, 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 no. You're around the age where you'd be my father. So uh, one could be Vader, <laughs> one could be Vader, one could be Anakin. How about that? Uh, just call, uh, well, call Cory your drunk uncle. <laughs> <What's> yeah. your... <laughs> that makes sense. And if, if, if this was Sith Disturbers, I would probably cut in some Bo Bobby Moynihan. From, from SNL. <laughs> but I'm far too lazy to do that. Instead, I'd rather talk about Rebels. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> let's give the people what they paid for, right? Okay. So, what, why we're here today, we are recapping season three and previewing season four. And, uh, well, let, let's just start where this whole thing left off. So, way back in. March? Was it March that it, that it ended? Oh, it was so long ago. Eight so months. long ago. <clears throat> Eight so months. We had the two-part oh. finale called Zero Hour, I believe, which saw the, the rebel fleet, General Dodonna, uh, Sato's, and Hera's fleet, kind of get curb-stomped by Thrawn's forces uh, in orbit around Adelon and also on the ground. Uh, so, I mean, that in a very, very brief nutshell is where we're at. The rebels escaped due to uh Thrawn's stupidity, to put it bluntly. Stupidity, no, it was uh <laughs> Constantine's stupidity. If he stayed where he would have stayed, they would have won. Like Well that, that's that's the thing. Like I've pointed this out when we used to review uh Rebels on Tumbling Saber. And, you know, the thing about Thrawn is he he seems very on point all the time. So too on point. That, he was always not, so on point. But the thing is that Constantine failed him in this show prior. He had not listened to him. He did not obey direct orders. He lied directly to, to Thrawn's face. Yet Thrawn put him in his, like, uh, what do you want to call it? He's like, he was like... He was, he was part of Thrawn's upper management. Yeah, but yeah. Like, when... Like, he's the one why everything failed, like M said, so... Thrawn okay, putting him back in that position of power is a representation of Thrawn's failure. Sure. Of his vision, like awful vision. As Bendu said too, he's going to just embrace cold and I think he's going to die. I hope he dies. No, I don't hope he dies, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's been a really good villain, right? I, I hope Hera parks the ghost right on his nuts. <laughs> Well, that's what's interesting as well. I mean, we just spoken about this not too long ago as well, that there's that Thrawn, new Thrawn novel coming out. Yeah. So who knows what's going on with that? Yeah, no, I, I don't know that he's going to die. They're investing an awful lot into Thrawn and to kill him off in season four. Eh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But so, can somebody, it's been months, maybe you've had some time to think about it. So Thrawn is bombarding the rebel base from from orbit. The shield is just about ready to give out, and that would have been the end. And for some reason, Thrawn says, eh, stop. Because he had to capture them. Why? That, that, that was his orders from Tarkin. 
to capture them? I, well, because didn't Thrawn say, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to capture them. I, I want to crush them. And he told he Hera, right, that, that he didn't want, um, that he didn't want surrender. He, he wanted their destruction, right? At the time. But Tarkin said, capture the rebel leaders so we can make examples of them. Mm. All right, that's the Maybe best like explanation a... I've heard so far. Public Definitely. execution is so um, effective. All right, that's the, that's the best explanation I've heard. There you go, M. Because <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't remember that, but I'm going to take your word for it, and that does make sense. Well, I but... just watched Zero Hour like a week ago. I Perfect. was actually watching uh, Mandalore and Twin Suns just before we started. So. <sighs> I got a question for you just before we move further with this show, like um, just delving into this quickly. What do you prefer more uh, like the animation stuff or like, what are you more into the animation or the saga? All, all of it. You can't choose it. Eh? I can't choose all of it. Okay. It's all good. Moving on. <laughs> well, how can you be a, a true Star Wars fan if you don't love it all? It's true. <laughs> But I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I I love Rebels. Like, oh my god, I love Rebels so much. And but I mean, the saga is the saga. You know, it's just they're kind of on different planes of existence for me. I guess I love them equally in a way. But yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, here's a, here's a better way of putting it. What are you more excited excited for? Um, Rebel season four or just having come off the high of the last Jedi trailer? Like, are you more excited for the movie? That. How can you ask me that? Because like, I'm, I'm, I'm gauging. I'm gauging. I want to see where you're can at. Can you put your measuring stick away? Can we just talk about Rebels, please? <laughs> I guess so. God. <laughs> I'm trying to get that no M. Good Lord. She just said everything. I, for, I guess the easy answer is I'm excited. I'm most excited for what comes next. Well, there Rebels and then Last Jedi and then like more Rebels and then Untitled Star Wars Episode, what, nine? Yeah, nice. No, Han Solo. Oh, right. Now we have to wait longer for episode nine. Yay. It'll be worth the That's wait. That's okay, though. Yeah, Christmas. We get the Christmas release again. I was looking forward to May, but whatever. I still like Rogue <laughs> One more than The Force Awakens, for sure. Well, what's your favorite film? Let me ask you that. What's your favorite film in the saga? Oh, man. Uh, I have to go, I think... Damn it. Okay. Between Revenge of the Sith and New Hope and Rogue One. I can't choose which one goes first. Mm. But in Revenge of the Sith, it had the best lightsaber duel ever. Like, ever. In the whole, like, shebang. <laughs> uh, that, that is one of, that's in my top three, I would think. Revenge what? of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm old school. I'm, I'm trapped. It's Empire and a New Hope for me, but Revenge of the Sith, I think, is is got to be right there for me, number three. Well, hello, I was in foreign during the time of <laughs> New Hope to <laughs> Return of the Jedi. Hey, well, so. you know, I, I, M, I'll have you know, I was I, I was not I wasn't born, born for a New Hope either. I wasn't oh. born for a New Hope or Empire. My father was. He actually snuck into the theater, did pay a ticket. He went through the fire exit just to watch it. A smart oh. man. Yeah, good man. <laughs> all right, guys, come on, let's get back into rebels. We Corey, sorry. Corey, Corey tangents enough all over the place. I'm get sorry. Back on the rails here. Um, all right, so Thrawn's assault to, uh, kind of failed. The rebels slipped away. Um, we lost Bendu. Did we lose Bendu? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think he just he like disappeared like Ben would and Yoda did, right? But. It's yeah. like he knew where it's like he knew where he was going and he was like, Don't worry, I'll be just fine, but you won't. Did he yeah, yeah. did he force ghost or did he just dematerialize? Well, he I think he, he just it's a trick that he has up his sleeve. I don't know if it's necessarily force ghosting, but he, he definitely knew where he was going because God it was so easy to kill him. It's like uh focus your fire at the center of the cloud. <laughs> Like storm, seriously, Bendu? Storm. Sorry, well, whatever. You know, like it was that was that was kind of really lame. Was that your throne, or was that your Bill S. Preston Esquire? <laughs> By the way, oh, guys, <laughs> you're too much. But, By the uh, way, Em, you're gonna have to. You're, at some point, you're gonna have to play referee. 
with, yeah, the, with the two brothers here because we end up fighting like hamsters. I get, yeah, I get the whistle. I think that I have to add that on the Dollarama list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, like Emma just said earlier, the way she she spoke to Thrawn uh, or uh, Bendu, sorry, spoke to Thrawn and said the uh, many arms in a cold embrace or yeah. something like that. Like, yeah. dude, what is that? Like a Rathtar? Is it the Sarlacc, which I would think would be hot? <laughs> Borgullet? Like, who knows, man? Like, but it definitely kind of spells the end for him, I would think. I, I don't think Bendu's wrong. Though? I mean, what that Corey, you said Borgullet. I think that is amazing, uh, an amazing line to go down. Where you, well, you, they've pit, yeah. you can see maybe a bit of a rivalry brewing between Thrawn and and Saw Gerrera. So what if Thrawn goes after Saw but runs into Borgullet instead? And what's Thrawn's greatest asset? His mind. Exactly. It would be so like imagine a crazy Thrawn by the end of it. Like he would be broken. I was just think, I was thinking the same thing. But he's he's pretty strong willed, so maybe he can resist Borgullet. And then we, oh, no. is Thrawn force sensitive? He can resist. Oh, God. It kind of reminds me of like Brainiac in that, uh, which or, I think wait. also. There's the thinker too in the Flash this fourth season coming. So that's really cool. It, it kind of like thinker and Thrawn are both mind over body, so to speak. Even though Thrawn takes care of himself and he's capable of physical combat. As we saw in Imperial, through Imperial Eyes, where he was fighting his robots, or sorry, droids. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you caught yourself. Yeah, I did. Long day at school. We have a, we have a very harsh, uh, far, far, we have a very harsh finding system here at Tumbling Saber. If, if you mis- if you make a mistake, you get docked like several dollars. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> right on. Yeah. <laughs> It's only applies to me. It only, it only applies to Corey. And it's sort of like a kangaroo court that we've got. And you know, Corey is deeply in debt, but I doubt that I'll ever collect. So, Well, I think you have collected. I think I sent over about oof, God knows how many toys last week. It was like Christmas. I was like, I had them all laid out in my, my trunk like a drug dealer. That anyway, must have like, like a drug deal going down too. For sure. Like I, I was like, <laughs> we'll meet in the parking lot here at Tim Hortons. Okay. And like my, my, I'm like, you got to see these. I put them on display in my trunk. He's like looking mm, some fine merchandise. Okay. Rebels. Yeah. Focus, Corey. Are, are you like Sorry. a little guinea pig? Cause, or goldfish? Because <laughs> your kind of. sucks. It depends. We already recorded tonight. So, you know, I'm Get all kind of coffee. all over the place. Drink some Coke. Oh, like, no, been- no. Coca-Cola. Well, no, it was a real suggestion. I'm actually drinking Sprite. <laughs> Corey just needs to sit in his chair and concentrate. That's it. All right, so Thrawn. Thrawn's, what's Thrawn doing here? He's got his Tide Defender program that he's trying to get off the ground. That's that's his big deal, right? Whereas Krennic on the other side has got a much bigger deal. But I think the Tide Defender program is going to be a big part of Thrawn's story for Season 4. And I think mm-hmm. one that we can surmise will probably fail badly, right? Yeah. We'll have to see. I mean, they will put up a fight, I think. It's the shield generator. Or, yeah, shield generator. So that will make the X-Wing fight a lot harder. Oh, I can't wait to see the X-Wings. Oh, well, that's the, that's the thing. Like, what I think one of the – the TIE Defender, once it reeks – they send out a few protocol uh, – or a prototype, sorry, out there, and they give a taste of the rebellion at one point, and they kind of decimate them. They're like, "Holy cow!" The rebellion's like, "What is this?" Then we know in one of the latter episodes of the first six episodes, anyhow, they want to get their hands on one of these, and I think that they're going to reverse engineer it to create the X-wing as uh, an effective, like, uh, opponent to this thing. But yes, that. That facility is going to be – it's Thrawn's baby at this point kind of. Like he knows. He's like, this ship is awesome. Trust me, when once you have it in production, it's a, it's a win-win, you know? So it's going to be a big thing for the Rebels to eliminate this. That will be their win for this season, I, I, I would think. Mm, yes, because Lothal is going to get destroyed. But there's got to be more to this season 
in well, regards maybe, to maybe liberating Lothal is is the big win, and taking out oh. the, the that imperial factory is is part of it. The well, show hasn't been really about the alliance. The show has been about Lothal. Yeah, it's Ezra's show from Lothal. Yeah. No, I get what you guys are saying there, but what I'm saying is that I get the war aspect, the Tie Defender, liberating Lothal is yeah, that probably makes the most sense because even Kana says it like. Like, uh, what does he say exactly? Uh, our place is here, uh, Lothal. Yeah. Um, we are the but... balance, Ezra. We were here. We were meant to be. We were meant to become Jedi for Lothal. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, I I don't know. I just want to see the Force aspect of it all more, as opposed to okay, they destroyed the Tide Defender. Okay, that's that. Like, I want to see something deep in the Force between Ezra and Kanan, their relationship, and, again, the Force in general. Uh, like what is... It's Ezra's show, right? Which... Yeah. It's always centered around Ezra. You, There's not one episode where you don't see Ezra. The rest of the crew, you don't see much. Well, it just depends on the episode, too. Yeah, I no, think it's Ezra's true. been in every episode, right? Yeah, Ezra's been in every single one. So Ezra, Ezra liberating Lothal would be amazing, or call sacrificing him. himself for Lothal. Call him. Uh, <laughs> I wonder Wolf how long Lothal. it would be before Corey suggested a sacrifice. Hey, don't I don't want that for any of the crew. And again, I don't know if it necessarily makes sense, but you know, uh, there's probably going to be that's going to happen this season, for the most part. Not, uh, I'd say a small percentage, maybe a five to ten percent of the characters we're familiar with, but. Embrace yourself. Well, you can't kill Ezra off. It's the it's he's the essence of that show. It's also a kid's show too, so you don't kill a kid off, basically. He's still a kid. Hell I'm still a kid. <laughs> We're all kids here. Are you kidding? No. Oh jeez. I, I you know, sometimes I like to try and fool myself. But you're right, Em. <laughs> like it's it's a little it's a little bit dark on a kid's show. Please let's not kid ourselves. It's a kid's show. To kill yeah. the kid at the center of the show. That, that doesn't seem fitting to me. Well, you know what? Filoni had recently gone on record, I believe, as saying, we don't consider it a kid's show when we're writing it. And whatever gets written, for the most part, flies. Like, my kid's five years old. Again, granted, um, we were watching an episode not too long ago where, oh, God. It was, I think it was the end of, toward the end of season one. I can't remember exactly, but two Imperial officers, they were like the main baddies kind of like goofing around on Lethal. Like they were such oh, bumblers, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and th their heads got cut off. Oh, yeah. Arrest and going grunt. Yeah. yeah. So my, my son had seen this episode many times prior, but now he's starting to become awakened. Like, he can start noticing things more now. Like, as a, as a kid, it kind of flies over their head. Like, they're so oblivious to things. So, last time he saw that episode, it was on TV, he asked me. He was like, what just happened there? And I was like, um, <laughs> like, they kind of got their lo heads lopped off. <laughs> I didn't explain that. No, I was just like, I don't know what I said to him, but I didn't tell him that. And that's not exactly kid-friendly. No. No, the outcome is not kid friendly. They did cover it up, but they're they're not they're not gonna kill Ezra. They can't kill Ezra. They I I guess they can't even really kill Sabine either, because they're the same what age. If, what if how is this? What if Ezra's not really dead? What if he's reunited with his parents, so to speak? If you see that as a result of him liberating Lethal and not being part of the living force anymore? Oh, no, no, <laughs> no. Okay, well, let's let's save all that for our, our predictions at, towards the end. Let's let's touch base with each of the ghost crew and a couple of other key figures here. So uh, we'll start with the with the heart of the ghost crew with Hera. And she's full steam ahead with the rebellion. She is now she's now Captain Syndulla, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And she she is just fully focused on what's happening with the rebellion now. And we know that there's, uh, you know, there's a thing going on with her and Kanan, but that seems to be slip sliding away as she becomes uh, further entrenched with her duties and responsibilities. So what do we see 
coming for Hera? Is is she going to keep on plowing straight ahead towards the rebellion, or as they alluded to in the trailer, um, is there going to be sort of a uh, reconnection with with Kanan? She does become it, a general. She does become a general because you hear her in Rogue One yeah. on the intercom. So, so something's big going to go on between I think season four and how she jumps that into that rank when it comes to Kanan I'm not sure we'll have we'll just have to see but I'm rooting for them who doesn't that a new dawn was just phenomenal that book is quite just lost for words because ah, they have a long history and, and even in the you know the shorts right for Star Wars Rebels like the little shorts that were leading up to Sparkle Rebellion you can tell that those two were, you know, a, sort of a thing because, you know, oh, yeah. that, that was I think that was pretty obvious right from the get go. Yeah. Corey, any uh, thoughts on Hera? Of course. Well, I mean, oh. I love Hera so much. Like, honestly, like when I think about it, like just to start this this new show, our Bridger Transmissions, <clears throat> I think it's really important to mention Hera in the highest, highest, highest regards because, uh, you know, she started the Ghost Crew and the Ghost Crew to me. Like, I love their names. They're the Ghost Crew. Like, Harry even says in the trailer this, this season, like, they don't call us the Ghost Crew for nothing. Like, uh, they're all called Spectres. You know, that's their code name. They're their and own then Phantom. splinters. And then Phantom, you know, their, sure. their little ship. It's everything's so connected and tight there, but just their duty, what they've done, the Rob, they were like the Robin Hood of the galaxy. They kind of slowly got adopted by the Rebellion. And Hera is such an integral part of that. Like it's it they're so embedded deep within the rebellion that I think they to me they are the genesis of it all. They brought everyone together. She brought everyone together. They tied all these splinter cells to become one like fighting force. And it's evident in the Rebel Alliance symbol. Like the Rebel Alliance symbol is emblematic of a Phoenix, Phoenix Squadron, uh, which is the evolution of the ghost, pretty much. And it's also an evolution of Sabine Wren's artwork. Like her artwork is very closely related to the Re Rebel Alliance symbol. And it's again, both of them are representing phoenixes. So I don't think that's, I think that's, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think there's a reference there in saying these guys are at, like when the Rebellion finally says like, wow, this is it. Like these guys created it. Like they, tied it all together and let's give them this is the their homage they gave so much to us for us to to be able to move forward well there you go but, you're, yeah. you're you're i can't really argue with much of that i mean these guys are at the very heart of the rebellion for sure and yeah. brings up a, a good point as well too i think uh all the responsibility she takes on this season with the X-Wings and her own crew. And it's just going to be more responsibility, more responsibility for her. And she's going to take it on the, her back because that's just the way she is. I think we're going to see her granted the rank of general by the end of the season because she's going to probably have lost a lot by the end of it. Or she will have, have achieved so much. Maybe she, she will both, take out. Both. She, maybe she'll be the one to take out Thrawn. Oh, she should be. That's, I mean, Thrawn wants her. Worthy. And that, that's the thing, too. Like, look at that. Thrawn has analytically looked at the entire rebellion and he said, get me Harris and Dula. It's like she's the linchpin, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, she's at to this point, she's their best pilot. And she's the head of this this ghost crew that have caused them so much trouble. So, yeah, you want she's like the mother of the rebellion, almost kind of in a way of the ground crew, you know? Yeah, you you want to stop the rebellion? You know, go get Hera. Get the head. If you want to cut off the snake, get its head. Or sorry, yeah. If you want to kill a snake, cut its head off. She's <laughs> she's the part. She's like the head of the whole thing. She's. It's. But then, two more shall grow. Hell Hydra. No, 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 Wrong no, show. no, no, no. Wrong show. <laughs> Marvel sucks. <gasps> DC. Ah, uh, I'm. I'm big on. Well, I'm kind of big on both. MCU universe. Anyway, not okay, going to tangent. Okay. Not going to go there. Okay. Okay. Just. Well, working. anyway, Hera's responsibility. Uh, regarding Hera and Kanan, pff, heavy stuff going on there. I'm on completely the same page as 
as Hera is in the sense that I've I don't know that I've ever been involved more with a couple in Star Wars aside from Han and Leia. Oh like, please. Hera, <laughs> well, like Han, Han and Leia, okay. Well, like they're 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 right up there for me. But Kanan and, and Hera, dude, like their their relationship is intense. Like it's so, you know, it took up like two seasons where they like touched their foreheads together, and people were like, "Oh my god!" And they love each other. It's it's, it's clear. It's evident, and it's interesting. So oh, it's very clear. It's I think very- that's gonna be a big part of the season. I don't think necessarily that you know. Hera's gonna ditch him or anything, but she has responsibilities, and she's gonna like Kanan's gonna love her more for that in the long run. Like well, I don't think they're gonna be separated let's, by. Let's transition to Kanan here. So, Corey, I, I I think you're driving at the big thing for Kanan here. It, it seems like he still has one foot out the door. He's there for Hera. I don't That's think it. he's he's not there for the rebellion. He's there for her, and he he's I think he feels like they're they've paid their dues. And they should they should pack up and go, and we know that Hera's not going to do that. So, is it just me, or is Kanan becoming a bit of a loose end here? Because he he can't train Ezra anymore. He's he's admitted to it. He can't teach Ezra anymore. Hera yeah, he's admitted to, to wanna... it, but Ezra doesn't want to hear it. Ezra says no. Like you don't know how much you could still teach me. Well, anyway, it, it, from Kanan's point of view, he can't help Ezra any longer. And Hera is going, ah, the rebellion, 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 Kanan. I can't leave. So uh, to me, this does not spell good news for Kanan. Because you can't just have this guy twisting in the wind, hanging around, swinging a lightsaber without really much of a story arc left to complete. So I, if anybody from this ghost crew is going to pay a price this year, I think, I'm think i thinking it's going to be our favorite blind Jedi. Our cowboy Jedi. Our cowboy Jedi. Yeah, I I love Jedi. For sure. Like, just remember his first moments at Spectre 1. Like, kid, I'm going to let everyone in on the secret. Like, how cool is that? He's like, he was like the father to this crew in their early adolescence. uh, Just bringing them all together, being the person that everyone looked up to in that time of their need. Like, everyone looked up to Kanan. He always saved the day. And even at the end of season one, that's kind of the way it was. He sacrificed himself for them. And now the kids are all grown up. Like they're, they've learned from him. They've learned their lessons from him. Uh, so yeah, he's now kind of that backseat character in a way, but it's going to play on our heartstrings badly. Like it I is. definitely, it I is. definitely don't see him and, and Hera separating. Like, well, you, you, you don't want to leave the rebellion. I, I got to end this relationship. Like I see it more as being like, I can't leave you. I love you. <laughs> and what, whatever happens, like he, uh, if Kyle, like you said, he, he moves on. Uh, no, I don't Kanan, know. Kanan gets tied up. I mean, they're not, I, I don't think they're going to have any Jedi kicking around. I mean, Ezra's well, a different it. story because he's not quite full fledged Jedi. So maybe he's, he's undefined, but Kanan as a knighted Jedi, we know from a new hope that there's none, there's none left, and it would be, I think it would be irresponsible for them to leave Kanan dangling, right? Well, that's what I'm kind of saying. Like, I think that he's moved on in the sense. I didn't want to say it really because it hurts. <laughs> Just he's moved on in that sense of being Force Ghost, whatever. He's moved. He's become one with the Force, and I think he does that. Because he just can't leave Hera, and he's gonna do the right thing. And and like Kyle said again, it would really hit us in the feels. Well, I got hit in the feels when Dave posted that uh, space family, like. Oh, that sketch from a few days ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wonder how many times you're gonna see everybody together like that. I hope they have one episode where it's just them on a mission, like them. Focus on one objective and then come back to the rebellion after they complete it. I think people in the last seasons would call those fluff episodes. Oh no! Well, actually, did you watch the Star the Star Wars show today? I did. Yeah, I did not yet. No. No filler episode. Not filler. That that's was, it. Not that there's going to be a filler ep- ever a filler episode in the yeah, first I mean, three f- seasons. F- yeah, he always to kind of took a not not a fence, but he he never felt that any thrill episodes got out in the first place but he knows what people means by them yeah yeah, he said that there's none of that in this season and that everything that we considered 
filler before is going to be touched on now and uh, wrapped up so it all makes sense. Which is great news. Love all right, guy. so Kanan, uh, what, what's the consensus here? Is, is, does he make it out alive from season four? Uh, I don't know, but it almost seems like he wants to get out of the rebellion. Like, Oh, absolutely. And he's trying to, I think, maybe bring Ezra with him. Yeah, he, I mean, he might want to go alone. That's for sure. And Ezra, uh, Ezra's he kind most, of a fence sitter, he, right? He mostly wants Hera to go with him. Like, that's his end goal in this, is to happily ever after with Hera. And that's when he asks her, like, like when's enough enough, kind of. Yeah. All right, so let's let's move on with to Ezra, the focal point of the show. And so, oh, I mean, Lord. Yeah, it's, I mean, what what happens with Ezra is is kind of the beating heart of this show. So He's that, my favorite character. So, uh, like, oh, to see him go, to see the show go is like so so depressing. So yeah, depressing. It's, it's sad. But I mean, we're gonna get sixteen or fifteen episodes of really solid yeah. Rebels action. So I, I mean, I, as much as I'm looking forward to all this yeah there's a bittersweet feeling to all this but Ezra's kind of being pulled in a couple different ways here he's got the Jedi path to follow uh, liberating his planet and there's also the I guess there's sort of a simmering subplot with him and Sabine is there a romance cooking there or is there is that just us is that is it really a platonic thing oh Um, god I hope not I want like um I was listening to he's also Canadian too he's on YouTube I don't know if you know him uh, Force Within TV, Mike? I've heard of, yeah. Well, he said that when those two are going to be alone, and by the sounds of it, it's going to be alone a lot, that builds relationship. So, maybe. And you've seen it throughout all seasons where Ezra's infatuated with her in a way. Oh, yeah. Always trying Actually, to impress her. And then slowly, yeah. slowly, you see her starting to respect him more as he becomes. I, I wrote this down in my notes. Ezra, when Sabine was training with Kanan, he, remember how he got up and said, whoa? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then he was willing to protect Sabine when she got her v- Vambrae sliced. And also in Legacy of Mandalore, when she was fighting Saxon, he was going to step in, too. So... Well, there's been so many episodes in the past as well where he's jealous of Lando. Uh, I know that was so funny. <laughs> the puffer like, thing. He's always trying to kind of impress her, but once he's kind of come into his own, that's where she's start- now she's starting to respect him more in the sense that he's accomplishing more. He's more mature. Like he's, I've, I remember seeing certain scenes where Sabine looked at him like, well, she kind nice. of she looked at him like the annoying younger brother at the beginning, but there's been times in the last season where she looks at him like, damn, no, she, yeah, she, awesome. no, she notices that there's there, this boy that she, that used to bother her is now maturing into it, into a powerful young man. Yeah. And he's also a Lieutenant. Don't forget. Lieutenant, <laughs> Lieutenant Bridger. That's right. <laughs> Lieutenant, where are you going? <laughs> you know, he would have been demoted so fast out of that role. <laughs> he should have been. He makes so <laughs> many, teenage boy decisions that he would have lost that rank immediately but that's okay you, you expect nothing less um okay so ezra brought sabine back into the fold and uh, the, the two of them were instrumental in in helping the rebellion escape adalon so where is ezra going this year obviously this is the biggest question of the show we're so concerned about what's going to happen with the jedi and he's not quite there yet. So does he get there and then fade away? Or does he just take a left turn and head down some other path? What do you, what do you think, Em? Okay, well, I, I, I quote on this too. The Empire is already on the verge of winning a war. Most of the rebel, rebel alliance doesn't believe it's already begun. So I think he's um, embarrassed with the rebellion. But there's also the force aspect too. It's like a 50-50, right? Because he's working with the Rebellion, and then he's also Force-related. So I can't I can't say what, where he's going until I start watching Season 4, because we really don't know what we're in for. We, we've seen the trailers, but we don't know. No, the trailers have been, I mean, so expertly put together that it they tell us nothing. Yeah. 
I'm sure but, Corey's going to demystify it for us, right, Corey? Like, you, you know where this is going with Ezra. Not really. Like, <laughs> it's it's it really would have really been nice to see him live on and to see him again in later movies and whatnot. But uh, he gets to live on. I don't know how. I'm not going to try and explain that part, but I I do know his purpose is like you guys said to liberate Lethal. It would even kind of be cool to, you know, we've seen a lot of these cave paintings. They've been incorporated with a poster, and we have that that riddle, uh, Loth Cat, Loth Wolf. Uh, well, no, Loth Cat, Loth Rat, Loth Wolf Run. Pick a path, and all is done. That's it. Like this is all like it. I, I hope that Ezra is like that. Like we could see Ezra, um. Almost in that ep- like in the episode of Legends of the Le- the Le- there's this legend that ends up being Zeb. So it's like a prophecy oh that Zeb God. fulfills. Yeah. So what yeah. what if you see like Ezra like on these cave paintings like this kid's gonna come the son of Lothal, uh, he's gonna liberate the planet at one point and the wolves kind of like help him because of that. Like we know he's good at communicating with animals. He's obviously gonna reach out to them. He's going to defer from the norm in regards to the force as well because, you know, you can see Kanan saying like, yo, Ezra, like, what are you doing? He's just like, I know Kanan, like, trust me this time. I know what I'm doing, you know, and it's going to deviate from the norm, which is kind of cool. Pablo did say uh, that he was better than most Jedi in connecting with anything. Really, eh? Yeah. In Rebels Recon season Season two, just after Future of the Force. Probably right around the time. Probably right around the time of the Purgles. Yeah, and the kids that when the imp- the Empire was trying to steal the kids from oh, the yeah. Inquisitors. Yeah, where, yep. where Ahsoka battles the Inquisitors. Yeah. Oh man, she manhandled them. Oh, she she, she smoked them, <laughs> destroyed them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean uh, uh, this is the crux of the show. What happens with Ezra? It's 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 so hard to say. I, I I can't see him continuing on with the rebellion beyond this season. But what happens with him and the Force is a is a big deal. Um, oh yeah, it's probably really easy to say that. Um, you know, he he just leaves with Sabine and goes back to Mandalore, and they just hang oh, out on this that. neutral planet. That's that's kind of lazy, totally right? Love that. But it seems like an easy way out. So something big has to happen. I think if he will do that. Yeah, that's. I think that's too easy of a of a way out. If I can think of it, and you can think of it, and probably many other people think about that, then <laughs> I, I think we can safely assume that Filoni's not going to do that. Uh, you gotta now expect the unexpected, because he also said that there would be weird stuff to come, so, and it'd be dropped to the end. Yeah, Filoni likes likes a helping of weird with his animation. Well, who doesn't? It's animation. <laughs> it's Star Wars. Yeah, it, I mean, this is this is the place to kind of get really weird too. Yeah, for sure. If you get a little too odd on the big screen, fans reject it. But this is a well, I don't know. TLJ is going that way. Oh yeah, but I, I mean, this is going to go real weird. Like you're not going to ever get Altar of Mortis on on the big screen. You're no, not... never, never. But you're that not... was such a great episode. And he said that it'd be the I think I think this is what he meant, but in the Ahsoka way, it's kinda of gonna be like Mortis. So fingers crossed, I hope it's like that. Yeah, I, I really like that. I think that whole the end of Ahsoka's uh the last time we saw her, the tops cards it's so pointing towards something that so much something bigger like she went through a uh, a transition uh, a realization like I, I don't know what ahsoka is like what do you consider ahsoka even at this point like she says straight up i'm no jedi okay you're not a jedi you're not a sith what are you she's ahsoka okay so, I, so does she need a classification gray i guess gray jedi that's it, but people no, hate hearing no gray that. Jedi. There's no gray Jedi here. That doesn't exist. No. The, the <laughs> LF, Lucasfilm <laughs> says on. that. They, they just don't want to call it that. But by creating a, a character like Ahsoka to be an independent good guy, whatever you want to call it, uh, she has her own coat of arms in a way. And I don't know what else 
you'd call it, but they just don't want to call it that. Well, they don't, they don't want to call it that because it's an oxymoron. So Ahsoka's Ahsoka, and she's the exception. She's yeah, not an exception. Well, take, she just take uses a look the at force Dark for her. Killer. You know, she, she she's force adept, and she's not a Jedi, and she's also not bad. It doesn't make her gray because she's not in any way bad. The Force Unleashed one, two, that video game. I wouldn't classify him Jedi. Uh, yeah, Star Killer. No, yeah, not so much. Not so yeah, by the way, it's not, it's not fit. What do you guys think the chances are? Because uh, uh, I don't want to miss out on talking about this, but what do you think the chances that we see, not see, but get some kind of breadcrumb or tidbit that uh, so uh, about Ahsoka's whereabouts or what she's doing or how she's helping? Like, There's got to be something in this series that lays a trail for her to move forward. Oh, I, 100%. Like, do you think it has to do with the wolves? I think I think it does have something to do with the wolves. Me and too. The, and the convoy, convoys—that's what they're called, right? Convoys. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, they they could have some role to play in that, but yeah, I think one hundred percent we're going to touch on Ahsoka. No doubt about that. But d- did we finish with Ezra? <laughs> we are talking about Ezra and how he be mixed in that fold of force. I wonder where Kanan would play in that too. Yeah, some people feel like the two are kind of, you know, tied to the hip. Whatever happens to one happens to the other. I mean, could they go their separate ways at some point? I, I mean, it's, it's true. It's because like Kanan sacrificed himself for enough for the crew. You know, like like for Ezra, it it kind of almost be like fitting for Ezra to be like, like no, Papa, I'm staying with you this time. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. It's no. sad. Don't get me wrong. It breaks my heart to think about this. Like, God, this show, it kills me half the time. Like, All right. You know what? Let's 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 forge ahead. Let's, let's talk about Sabine. She's somebody who you could argue had the meatiest coming out party in season three. Oh, it's for sure. Yeah, for I mean, she, sure. She got to reunite with her family, she, and she's got the dark saber, which is a big, big deal. Um, and she doesn't necessarily want to be the leader of Mandalore, but she's assumed the mantle for now, uh, before she can pass it off. Which I assume it's, she's going to pass it off to Bo-Katan. I hope so. Yeah, God, that's, that's you know, be awesome. she's been through hell. She deserves some peace. I think. Yeah, I think we're three for three on that one. I think it's, you know, she unites Mandalore. Uh, gets the job done there, gets rid of the weapon that she created, and like you said, like her family's with the ghost crew, and she leaves her biological family saying, I'll be back, you know, like, this this matter is more pressing at the moment, I hope you understand. So do you, I mean, do we think that by the end of season four, is S- Sabine's going to be with the ghost crew, or back with her family? That all depends on how it turns out. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't guess. Oh come on, I'm sure you can. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like we, we, we. I have a hard time with that too. There, but uh, I'm definitely going to say that uh, she can't be a part of the rebellion anymore because she's like legend. She'd be such an invaluable asset that hopefully we would have heard about her more. So I'm going to say that whatever the. I've, well, I mean, she could have been with, that, I mean, we don't hear about Hera, but we know that she's part of the rebellion. No, I agree with you. Like, uh, there, there's a lot. The rebellion's a lot bigger than we probably assume. It's a, like a whole galaxy. So, yeah. But no, I really do see Hera, Sabine, kind of by the in the long run, completing the mission. Like, kind of when Hera or Kanan kind of says, like, when's enough enough to Hera? I think once this, the events of this season unfold, she'll be like, okay, like. I, I helped as much as I can, and I'm, I'm going back to Mandalore now. I think that's likely. I think that's possibly fitting for her. I, I, I don't know. It depends on on how much more trauma she has to endure. Uh, you know, I think she's obviously she she is haunted by her past. That weapon she created. What else is that going to do to her psychologically? I mean, she could just be like PTSD right out of the battle, and just go home and say, "I've had enough." 
that's possible. That could happen. Yeah. I think it she's too to strong Ezra. for that, though. She's Mandalorian. Yeah, she's well, she's female like Hera. Her, she, you know, like her and Hera, they I don't think anything can break those two. And I love how those two have been brought into the Star Wars world because. When I was in school, I got, often got teased that I like Star Wars. It's a boy thing. Well, it's not a boy thing. It never was. That's so... Uh, I almost swore there. You heard that. But <laughs> yeah. God, man, that makes me so upset because if there were girls that like I knew in our school that actually enjoyed Star Wars, it would be like, dude, what's up? Like, <laughs> I can't believe this. Like... It, it what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie like it is kind of a bit of a rare commodity but there's plenty 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 of girls out there and personally yeah. like to me it's like man that's awesome and I like how forces of destiny have like you know expanded on that I mean come on Leia was in the original trilogy she was a girl she was in Star Wars get a grip man <laughs> nope no offense to you <laughs> Dude, she she emasculated all the men in that movie. Like she, she was, she was the badass. Yeah, she was the boss. She was and the then, boss. And then I was born around the time of the new um, trilogy. So when I saw Padme, I was like, "Yeah, right on." Yeah, for the, sure. Well, Star Wars under, is huge on that character, right? Oh yeah. But Star Wars, uh, Disney. Lucasfilm, whatever it is, they've bought brought female characters to the forefront on all aspects of Star Wars at this point. But, like, which in, is nice. Yeah, for sure, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, they're slowly balancing the scale back the other way, which is very nice. Because they're such cool characters too. Yeah. I mean, come on, we're yeah. giving away a a Sabine Wren I this know, month I on SD. That. Oh man, it's such a Just gorgeous give it toy. To me. Just give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I could use one of those. I got her pops. The that's a nice figure too. Oh yeah, and I I have a friend who often teases me about how you can't move and articulate pops, but they're so damn cute. Oh, for sure. We were just talking about that not too long ago. We I have some pops. They're like, yeah, just, you have just... pops all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but soda. Uh... I say soda. <laughs> I was more referring to beer. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. This is true. All right. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm reeling this back in here, guys. We're going to plow ahead. What do you think of her hair? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a legit question. I think this one's been the best one. You, you, we see some natural hair color. In which season? Season four. Oh, it, it's a, yeah, it's like bluish and then purple, right? Like lightish purple. Who are you talking uh, about? Sabine. Okay. Yeah, like her. It's true. Her hair is. Uh, Just look at that poster, and it says it all. It's coming a little more. Makes her look a little more mature, I guess. You know. Yeah. Well, they all are growing up, and in the poster, here I am going back to Kanan and Ezra. Kanan doesn't have his blade ignited, but Ezra does. That too. He's kind of like the mentor at this point. You can see it, like Kyle was saying, he's kind of getting pushed to the background as he served his purpose in a way. Like he's kind of still like the easy. He's, he went from like father stature and the hero to like grandfather wise, oh. sage, blind guy. <laughs> I know his beard was like, holy crap! No. Like, I'm growing a beard. I'm blind. I'm growing a beard. Like come, can't uh, be that uh, hard to shave. Well, yeah, you can't blind. see. You can't shave anymore. <laughs> Or or he just became a hipster. Oh Lord! <laughs> all right, let's let's move no, on. No, no, no. What let's... it was? What he let it all go when he when he got blinded and he was all depressed for the first few episodes of season three. He let it go and he grew a beard and then he was like, "Okay, I'm back, hair. I'm gonna shave my beard." And she was like, "Yeah, you know, I kind of like it. Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> if I keep the beard, will you leave the rebellion? Maybe that's we'll the see. Deal. Just keep it, and we'll see." All right, so let's move on to Zeb, our favorite uh, Lasan. Muscle man. Lasat. 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 Yeah. I know. I feel like Zeb's story kind of took a, a big back seat in season three. I don't see him coming back into the four now, but yet I don't see him the same way I see Kanan as a loose end. 
Um, I, I see him as an obvious sidekick. And all along, yeah. I mean, since since season two, since we saw um, Legends of the Lasat, I felt like yeah. Zeb was going to go back home for sure. Yeah, I wanted him to go back home. Just, you know, to be home. Yeah, kind of the same same as um, Sabine in the sense that they have, you, we, we all know now that they have homes. Z- uh, Zeb kind of used the force to find Lyra's son through prophecy. Like, that blew my mind when I saw that episode. Legends of the Lasat is amazing. Into the Star Cluster, that song by... Um, oh, I, Kevin Kiner. Kevin Kiner, oh, yeah. My Lord. Oh, When I watched that, I was like, I, I could still remember, like, I had it, like, I'm wrapped up, like, holding a pillow, like, <laughs> sitting in, like, Indian position, just like, oh, and leaning forward, like, wow. Like, this is She's got a reaction amazing. video on that. <laughs> Like, I, it totally swept me away. It enthralled me. Like, just the way Zeb was just like, ah, oh, the way, like, everyone, the way Callus was chasing them and uh, the ties blowing apart and Zeb was just, like, believing in himself and the Force and this ancient mystical power that his people had, like, kind of allowed him to travel through this cluster. I was like, this is the Star Wars I've been waiting for. But definitely he's got his home planet, so it gives him an out. And I hope he does return home and, to... And the Empire can't touch him. The Empire can't go through that cluster. Yeah, I, I wonder if you can consider Lyra Sun the uh, part of the Unknown Regions, maybe. It'd be the Jedi safe house. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of those things now. They, they, it's such a wild card that they can do anything with it. The bubbles in space. Yeah, I mean, it could just be com- completely lost to time again, right? Because as, as far as we know, Hera's the only one with a copy of the coordinates of that place on her computer. So maybe at the end of, of Season 4, she drops him off there and then deletes the info off, off the ghost hard drive. Well, that's, I think Zeb was saying something like it's going to be a word of mouth kind of deal. Yeah. And I think... Oh, I can't... I don't think she could delete the coordinates off because... Once you chart it, you chart it. Mm, I, I guess, but I mean, they... they no, somebody, you can wipe somebody, your... Com- clean your hard drive remember, or whatever. Remember Thrawn's little star map of the galaxy when he was narrowing it down from like 92 planets to 21 or whatever it was? Somebody was jerking around with the available planets. So I, I, I imagine everything can be tampered with. Hmm. Anyway, that, that's, that's far from being a key point, to, key plot point here. Let, let's I mean, I, I, but guess I, all, I love all... Zeb. Like, I, I want a justification for his character. Like, you kind of said it, Kyle. Season, season three kind of took the back seat. Like, even that episode, uh, I think it was Warhead. Warhead. Yeah. Hey, that was funny, though. That was a It fun was a good episode. episode. I, I, I agree with you guys. Like, I was never a big fan of calling things filler episodes. I think each episode was meant to develop character uh, stuff, you know? Like, they don't need to do something heavy, heavy every week, so... Uh yeah, I mean, he kind of was a bit of a goof in that episode, but you know, five has an impeccable sense of humor. He does. I love it. Five, we we love that guy. One of my <laughs> favorite moments is him floating away sing, singing know, that song. I know, singing that song. That's one of my favorite Rebels moments. A lot of people hated it. I I that's, love that moment. I need a, I need a gift of that moment. Mu- musical singing in Star Wars. Period. I, it was it was amazing. It was so good. It was so funny. I was laughing for so every time I see it, I still laugh. It's it's unbelievably funny. It is. And, and who who do we have to thank for his presence? Steven Stannon. No. Like what? For, bring, for bringing him into the rebellion. All oh, right. We got we can't talk we have to talk about Chopper, even though you didn't put it in the notes. We have I to I know. I just noticed that too. I'm looking at the show notes right now and I'm like Hey, you can what? edit the show notes. I've always said, add whatever you like to the show notes, and you never do. It doesn't matter. Is, is this like a test or something? I just think you blatantly left out chop rules. Look, it's very simple, <laughs> chopper. Oh my god! Right, it's very weird. simple. Where Hera goes, oh. chopper goes. There you yeah. go. He's got his season lined up. He's got his whole bumblebee look at one point going on. But no, you want to know what that actually represents? Because us NHL fans would know immediately. Oh, the penguins? It, ugh. He's painted black and gold like a Pittsburgh penguin. Yeah. It's okay. I used to be a big penguins fan back ew, in... Ew. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> ew. Well, and the thing about Corey is that he's he's pretty much a fan of every team. 
You mean not um, true? Everybody? Like that's not true. <laughs> when they came out that year, like I remember, I was young. I was like, boom, Jagger, Lemieux. Anyway. So okay, Em, I don't know if you follow football at all. I follow some. But we have we have uh, a, a couple listeners down in the U.S. who certainly know their American football. Uh, so we asked Corey, what? Oh, who's your favorite football team, by the way, Corey? Because I'm a big Dolphins fan. Uh, one of our former teammates here at Tumbling Saber is another Dolphins fan. Carlos is a as a Dolphins fan. It's sort of this weird confluence of Dolphins fans, and none of us knew each other, um, you know, growing up. But so, Corey, who who are your teams? Oh, I like the Bears. Oh, and the Packers. Oh, I, like I, Packers. I like the Vikings too. So he like like Bears. All divisional it's those opponents. three. Those are the three. I like the Patriots. Okay. Um, and that's that's what? that's going to be it for us. Uh, okay. <laughs> we shall not talk about the Patriots. <laughs> this is a Star Wars show, not football. Yeah, let's get let's okay. get let's get back to chopper. Yeah, we can never talk about football again. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I like the CFL too. Argos. Let's okay. get back to Star Wars. <clears throat> uh, let's get back to Star Wars before you lose it. <laughs> oh, my team's a disaster. But, but, All right. but top rules though, right? So. A chop does rule, man. Like, God, this guy has done so much for the rebellion that goes overlooked, in my opinion. It does. Like, he's like, such a good grumpy cat. Like, he's the lo- most lovingest grumpy cat ever. You would never leave any of them behind, really. I, I, he, I, between R2 and him, I definitely choose Chopper. I, oh, am. Ah, hello. That's a hot take. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like that hot take. <laughs> wow, you know who doesn't like that hot take? Ads. Ads is probably tuning out right about now. Ads don't go. It gets better. Ads, I swear. Oh yeah, yeah. He started <laughs> following me on Twitter. <laughs> now he's gonna unfollow me. <laughs> he's gonna so block hard you. Feeling. So Trust hard me, feeling. Ads is one of the best dudes out there. Blocked, unfollowed, reported for spam, all that stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. <laughs> no, you're you're in safe hands here, M. The common yeah, is, is a very gentle place. I better put that in my my comments now, because I'm a, a knight. No, I should be Padawan. Padawan. You're, you're whatever you want to you're be. You're a here. co-host. You're a co-host. Yeah. There you go. What? What? Co-pilot. Co-pilot. No, 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 no. You, you're chopper, so you're co-pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also third leg of the tripod. Right. Right. All right. Oh, wait, let's. And- I have to Aquila? reel this back in again, okay. you guys. My goodness. I'm it's our first show. Chopper. You're making me really like act like the old guy here. Let's get yeah. back on track here, children. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so, okay. Chopper, he's with, Ez- he's with, she's with, whatever. He's with Hera. Where she goes, he goes. We see him in Rogue Wait. One. Thank you very much. And he's what? a wonderful droid. We love him. Goodbye. Let's talk about Callus. Just do what I think. Uh, he was really attached to Ezra's hip. We saw him in Twin Suns and in Zero Hour. He was with he Ezra the whole time. Yeah, he won't true. let any of his buddies go. Like, given that direction, Ezra's like, "I'm going here." Chopper's just like, "Ugh, okay." Like, I'm coming, and I'm gonna die along the way. It's like your buddy falls off the cliff, and you join him. Like, honestly, like in that episode, Chopper died. Yeah. It was so sad. I probably teared a bit. <laughs> now his, like... his battery ran dead. Yeah, that's that, that's no good. Oh, In the middle of a desert, that's not that's not a good look. Yeah, Chopper doesn't like sand either. I bet you that yeah, was some clean don't. job. <laughs> I think okay. Ezra got the chore, but Callus. Callus, his defection is complete. He's he's gone toe to toe with Thrawn. Uh, where does where does Callus go from here? Um, damn, maybe I mean, is, he's got so much intel for the rebellion to plot their um their attacks, their defenses yeah i I, I kind of see him as a contractor at this point, right? We need some intel. call up Callus. So let's see what he can tell us. Tell yeah, us. I got you there he's he knows the protocol. It's not because one person defective. they're gonna change the entire protocol of how the empire operates, so he's definitely gonna have a lot of information in that regard. Uh, we're probably going to see some trust issues throughout this. Like some people like still not fully convinced that hot callus is the guy. 
but he's going to prove them all wrong. Well, I, mean, I think the, he's going to come is now through. Full of imperial defle- defectors, right? True, but well, we'll see how it goes. Like he, his, his roots ran deep with this crew. I so, like that clip, um, it was videotaped at Fan Expo, and how they were left, Callus and Rex on the Ghost taking care of it. So, I think he's. I think he said something about. Um, you know how much this ship cost, like me trouble, and now I finally get to shit in it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Like, dude, like, I-, I love that character. Like, I I went ahead and spent uh quite a considerable amount of money to get in a three and three quarter inch of his of his season one toy. <laughs> it's a horrible toy. It's not opposable. It's just you know, it's callous. I've yeah. really been enthralled with the character. I think the fact that they got uh, David, uh, oh, I don't know, I'm sure how to p- pronounce his last name, but I know who you're talking about, though. Well, what do you mean? Like I know who the actor that you're talking about. He does. Oh yeah, he's just, just, amazing. Yeah. It's it's so cool that they landed him and he's done such a stellar job. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, so he's, he's he's done. Yeah, Callus has Callus has become sort of. He went from the guy that you really hated to a guy that you really like. I mean, it's almost like you were pulling for him the whole time, and he he come he came through for us. He 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 turned tail and turned into a good guy. But and I also feel like of Zeb. I I feel like he's the perfect character to hit us in the feels with a death. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah totally. Something also Vanessa Marshall said that in back in thinking season two Rebels Recon that he was a big jerk, like total jerk. And then you feel sorry for him when Zeb and Callus are stuck on that ice moon. Yeah, the honorable ones. Yeah. That was no, you don't feel sorry for him. You feel empathy in the sense that you know he's so been wronged, and he's kind of coming to his own senses because of. Zeb's uh, hospitality and honor, like Zeb's, Zeb Zeb could have put a bullet in his head, like right away. Like he's like Zeb's like uh, I'm not like no that. Bullet. It's blast bullet. <laughs> you know what I mean. Either way, <laughs> well, but he saved him. You know, like uh, Zeb, like just you know, he really they 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 saved kind of each other, but they realized that. At that time, like that meteor or whatever, I I, so I want to see that. I, we'll say cameo season four. I want to see ca- uh, Callus's meteor rock, whatever he had that Zeb gave him. Kind of, this will keep us warm, you know, like that. <laughs> He's so You're scared at that. Suck. Po- <laughs> I want to see it, man. He's so scared at that point, Callus. When he's in that episode, he's like, he's like, where are you going? Like, what is that? And Zeb's like, kind of like, hmm, this will provide some warmth. Oh my god, that's a really good, you know, imitation of Steve Bloom. Yeah, I'd do a pretty good Zeb, actually. Uh, well, next uh, TV series, if you get in, uh, you better, like, give us credit. <laughs> oh, for sure. Don't forget you guys about are all people. coming with me. Don't forget about the They're Commonwealth all coming with me. and your powerful yeah. friends. They're all coming with me. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so let, let's let's wrap this up. We talked about enough Thrawn, uh, talked enough about Thrawn. So I, w- I want to go through this drill that I've been looking at for you know this this list of potential season four cameos. We've got a long list here that we did way back at the end of season three. Now I want to bring Em into this, and we'll do this rapid fire. So Em, I'm going to throw a name at you. Go and ahead. You, you tell me yes or no. Is this character going to show up in season four? Let's do it. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll, I'll then I'll tell you what we what, what our answers are because I I still I yeah, have okay. this old copy here so here here we go, Ahsoka. Yes. Yeah, we were we were clear across the board on that one. So, uh, Corey, myself, and my wife sat in on that. My wife might show up on this show from time to time. You never know. Oh, that'd be awesome though. Yeah, I'll try. We'll, we'll try and pull her in at some point. When 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 Rebels was on Saturday night, it was much easier. Oh yeah, now it's on Monday. Yeah, bummer. All right, Kenobi. No. Yeah, we are nose on the board across the board there. Vader. Uh, maybe. 
Can I say maybe? <laughs> no, you cannot say maybe. <laughs> oh, you must okay. commit. But she hasn't seen me yet, Kyle. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with a yes. All right, M. That's two of us. Corey and Corey and my wife Candace said no. You and I say yes. How yeah. about the, the Emperor? No, we're definitely not seeing him. M, your your stock is rising here. So Yeah, but dude, man, this is all circumstantial <laughs> now. This is the old news though. Corey and Candace said yes to the Emperor, and Kyle and M said no. <laughs> this is bias. Corey, you suck. Corey, this is chopper. I mean, this chopper is, this... rules, but this is like chopper sucks. Yeah, but you, you like all this stuff has come out recently. Like I know now that Felonius said that, you know, uh, the emperor's not in this in this thing. You know, like uh, back in the day, it made sense to me. Like as soon as we ended out season three, I was like, well, yeah, Vader's kind of already done his thing in well, okay, this series. I'll give, the, I'll give you the emperor. He did say, and and the Vader thing. He did say that you know. He was pretty evasive about it, but we we know that both aren't going to be in it. It's going to be one or the other, and they ruled out the Emperor. So it's going to be Vader. Fine. All right. But still, like, it made more sense to me to say Palpatine because Vader's already had his heyday in the whole Twilight of the Apprentice thing. Like, how yeah. the hell can you top that? Didn't you make can't. sense to me. It makes <laughs> sense. But how the hell can you top a Twilight? You're not going to top Twilight at this point. Nobody's coming off a tie, a tie fighter like that. And the the whole like masks sliced in half. That unless was... unless Vader takes out both Kanan and Ezra, Ezra, like I don't know. Okay. If Vader kills Ezra, I will forever hate Vader. I don't care how good he is, what kind of Sith Lord he is, I will always hate him if he kills Ezra. Anyway, next. <laughs> there you go. Speeding things along. I like it, Em. All right, Inquisitors. No. All right. Corey, I wish, but we, no. We're, we're all knows except Corey. Corey says the Inquisitors will be will be back. Mm, ben do. I heard. But I'd like to see Ezra have a duel with some someone worthy of him dueling. Not Rook. That doesn't count. Or with an actual lightsaber. That, you're right. Inquisitors that... could be loopholed as well. I heard Filoni even saying that himself. Stop trying to compensate for your bad answers. I watched a I watched a video like <laughs> leading up to the show. You and your about, loopholes. I'm telling you. Uh, M, we're continuing. We're, we're gonna ignore Corey from now on. Bendu. Yeah, okay. No. No Bendu. All right. Well, M I, I'm I, wrong, eh? Well, I said yes, Corey said yes, my wife said no. Oh, girl I power. I, I I feel like I might be wrong on this one. We'll see. Me too. Uh Jin or so. Oh, uh, no. That's four no's across the board. I, I also feel like maybe we might be wrong on that one too. Well, I don't know because the timeline doesn't really add up because we know uh, Saw dumped her off, I think, a little earlier. But we also we saw Forces of Destiny where Sabine and Jin, may, Jin have, have interacted together. And I think that's all you're going to get. It's possible, but we know that they're they know each other. Yeah, they're buds. Oh, and it was something I wrote in my notes actually. Um, during like after the name of rebellion, I wonder how much time after that, and then they jump into episode five. I think it's five. Yeah, because Sabine's hair changes and her armor changes. Yeah, it's it's so hard to time to pin down these time jumps. So hard. I'm hoping it's around maybe six months to a year. Seems to make but sense. It does. We'll see. All right, Cassian and K two. I want to. Uh, yes. All right. Yes. Yeah, I'm a yes on that. Yeah, you were yes on that. I was yes. My wife was a no. Uh, Chirrut and Bays. No. Unfortunately, no. No. Unfortunately, no. Yeah, that's that's nose across the board. Galen Urso and Orson Krennic. I paired them up. I figured if you get one, you're gonna get the get them both. That's a definite no already. Yeah, that's that's nose across the board. Ray Sloan. Uh, hmm. <sighs> they should have made her price. Uh, she should have been the one that 
Oh, I forget her name now. I knew it last week. Oh, it's the brothers. Uh, uh, the guy that trained with Ezra's sister. The force nope. sensitive. Nope, nope, nope. I had a theory that Wouldn't that's, that be that's perfect, Finn's mom. Though? Wouldn't that be perfect to bring her in? Well, what was that? Uh, geez, the first episode's coming. Uh, the second half of season three with Saw. On Geonosis, Ghost of Geonosis. Oh, that was her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was her. No, I, I, I wanted that. That there's to me that should have oh. been Ray Sloan. Yeah, it should have been. Like no because question. It would per- perfectly fit in with Canera, having her there. It would have made so much sense. So. Okay, with... I, I, can, I'm gonna go with a yes. All right. Boba Fett or another notable, b- bounty hunter. Oh, definitely. Yes. All right. I'm sure I said no. No, you said yes, Corey. I did. Think about it. The ghost has become a very... Sought after. Yeah. And they've caused so much trouble for the Empire. The Empire needs someone to deal with it. And I know that Thrawn's got Rook, but why not add something else to the mix, Mm, too? You make a good case. That's it. Now that we got Rook, like that even changed my. I didn't know we had Rook by the time he answered this question. So had I known we had Rook, I definitely probably would have said no because Rook kind of takes that position in this season. Blue, 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 blue. That transition <laughs> though in that one trailer reminded me immediately of Bosk. That's why I was like, is that Bosk? Is that him in disguise? That would be cool. Don't get me wrong. I want to see that for sure. Like anyone, it could be Forlom or Zuckus. Like. Any one of those characters, why are they such cool cats? You know. Then like, again, Bosk and Ezra have history. Yeah, they do. So that and, would and be unique. Bosk has Bosk has history within animation as a whole. Like he was in yeah that arc in, from arc from the Clone Wars. That's mm-hmm. a wicked arc too. All right, Biggs. Biggs. No. 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 Sorry, I think I, I probably said yes. No, you, yeah, I we want all, it we so all bad. said yes. <sighs> I want it. Porkins. It'd be cool. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no. See, I, 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 feel, I feel like if you're getting bigs, you're getting Porkins. Him? I'm the only yes on 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 Porkins. No. You guys, no. Are, you guys are gonna eat your words on that one. We're getting Porkins, guaranteed. <laughs> Porkins. <laughs> <laughs> if you want expensive, he'd be to animate. Just saying. All right, we got a couple a couple more here for you. Akbar. Yes. I can't and remember here, what I a, said. Here's a curveball for you. Corey, you said uh, no to Akbar. Radis. No to Akbar. Yes to Radis. What do you think about Radis? Oh, yeah. And for finally, sure. the fake beard himself, General Maydeen. Be nice. I, I think yes. You said no, Corey. Oh, really? Yeah, we all said no. But Callus is Maydeen, even though Pablo <laughs> said no. Yeah, that's no, he did not. Yeah, but yeah. doesn't he look like Callus a bit? Just a bit. It, yeah, I mean that's why somebody asked the question. I think so. I think he confirmed Callus's name as being something like Alexander or something. Yeah, no? it's Alexander. So, uh, I'm gonna go with yes. You're gonna go with yes on Maydeen. That's brave. Good job. I like that. All right, last yeah. one. I, I slipped this in. This this one. Uh, I'm putting this one in here. The Death Star. No, but I think there's going to be breadcrumbs for that in the name of the Rebellion. Oh, yeah. We we saw that in the, in the trailer. Yeah, Tarkin kind of mentions Krennic's project in the trailer, Project Stardust. But are we going to get more than that? Are we going to actually see this thing on the screen? I, no. I think we've already seen it. Not the Death Star per se, but... Uh... Yeah. I think I think we've seen the Kyber crystal. If you look at both trailers and construction on Genosis. Yep. Yeah, we well, we've been there before in Rebels as well. Like kind of they went to Genosis was like it's wiped out. What's gone on here? It's, a, it's been a complete genocide. And there's all these like uh platforms kind of that they built in space that everyone's like what are these, you know? Um uh, so yeah. So what what do you say, Corey? Yes or no to the Death Star? Not the Death Star, but I think we've already seen it in the trailer. A giant kyber crystal. Yeah, so, we've definitely seen that. 
So that I might change I... my mind about Galen Urso, to be honest. We know he's studying and analyzing and trying to delay the process. Uh, so I don't know if they if they see that giant kyber crystal and want to destroy it. Or maybe it's a third death. I, I don't know. It looks like there's a big explosion at one point. So I got I don't know. one. You guys forgot someone very important. Uh, Cody. Commander Cody? Yeah. You think he's going to be, you think he'll be in this? I, I hope so. That's you why I'm mentioning some, him. That might be an, an interesting foil fit? for Rex, right? Yeah. Let's give Rex something a go for his money. I know Gregor and Wolf are going to appear, but I like to see Cody because Order 66, he thought he killed Kenobi. Right. That's funny, Em. And, well, didn't Cody go after Kanan as well in the comic book? Ah, uh, I, I thought that so. was. I think that was Commander Gray. Oh, was it? was it? I can't remember anymore. Oh, you know what's awesome? I have a a pinned tweet on my page since April fourth, two thousand seventeen, and it's a it's a poll saying who, if anyone, if anybody. Would you most like to see make an appearance in season four of Rebels? And your options were Inquisitors, Radis, Ahsoka, and Cody. And Ahsoka ran away with it, but Cody was number two. Yeah, I, I see that right now. Oh, something we should maybe touch on: uh, expectations for Heroes of Mandalore. You know what? Uh, I'm well... uh. We get rid of uh, Sabine's weapon. Yeah. The one that, that Kyle made the call on this a long time ago, which was kind of cool. Uh, right off the hop with the trailer, when you see these Mandalorians get disintegrated. Well, this, this was Kyle, the celebration trailer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kyle was like right away, like, I think that's the weapon Kyle uh, Sabine had created that she's so ashamed of. And it turns out that that seems 99% to be the case. I kind of want some embarrassing moments for Ezra because we saw him in Legacy of Mandalore and he's just talking, talking. And then also when he puts his hands up and they're like, shoot to kill. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like the embarrassing moments for him. So I like, I would like to see that for yeah, sure. They, they got to keep that humor, humorous element alive to some degree. Yeah. And then of course, Sabine's father. Yeah, Definitely. he's he's back right off the bat. And then the I just want to see Sabine like man, like just That's... even in the trailer, the way she like spins into that like with her rocket and the kick, like Yeah. Well, she is Mandal. Mandalorian, man. Like when you, people see her in action, they're gonna be like, Holy shit, like where has she been? Oh, whoa, for, for, my wish. <laughs> where has she been for the past couple of years? She's been chilling with a ghost crew, like she's one upped all the Mandalorians. She's taken them out one by one. Fen Rao. Uh, what's the other guy? Gar Saxon. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like she is Mandalorian. Mandalorian Obut. Like she is. Way to bring Quebec Quebecois into this. Obut. Either way, Obut. Like she <laughs> is. Know. She is. The, she's gonna reunite the people. Also, yeah, uh, she went like. Full Mando on those poor jetpack soldiers in on Geonosis. Man, she's done her fair share. Like honestly, when you look at Sabine, uh, she's almost like a Jedi. The way she moves, like she's dodging like five, six guys shooting at her. She's just, like flipping, jumping, <laughs> like she's yeah. All right, guys, time to wrap it up. Any any final crazy thoughts you want to throw out there? Any any wild prediction you want to throw out there? I, I'll give you the the floor for a moment here, Corey. You can. I'll let you go first. Um, uh, I think we're gonna see that Kyber crystal. I think that's a big thing, like uh, that not everyone's noticed. Uh, I don't know. Like my my big thing was Radis as coming in as a cameo. That'd be really neat. Prediction wise, I, I I don't know, man. Those are my two big things. Like this season is so open to so many possibilities with all the characters. So I think we talked about this all night. And yeah, man, I'm 
I pretty much said my piece. All right, fair enough. Em, anything else you want to throw out there before we wrap up the show? I think Ezra is connecting with something. Remember Pergrel, and then remember his eyes in one of the trailers? Yep, absolutely. I think he's going to have a really deep connection with I don't know what yet. The wolf. Well, yeah, but that's too obvious. Well, I think they don't have many episodes to flush stuff like that out, so I think that's the way they're going. It'd be cool to see him have a deep connection again, like the Pergale. Well, it's going to happen because we've already seen the the light in his eyes that the per like the Pergle had that like hyper safe space jump or whatever in their eyes. And Ezra has it now. And um, I also. This is hard to actually theorize, but it's something of a valid point. Uh, Ezra is carrying Sabine on a wolf. So I wonder what happened to her and him when they were on, I guess, a mission together. And she, she got... looks blindfolded too, no? No, she doesn't look blindfolded, but she definitely looks She's injured. out of it, that's for sure. She definitely is. If if Ezra's carrying her helmet, it's for good reason. Absolutely. Oh, there's a... Yeah, there's all kinds going on in the season. <laughs> Prediction-wise... Well, we find uh... out soon enough, right? We, we'll be back uh, in, in less than a week from now. We'll be breaking down... What's the, what's the opening episode? It's on Monday. Is it in the name of the rebellion? Oh, no, it's Heroes nope. of Mandalore, Heroes. part one and two. That's why, that's why I asked. With the yeah, yeah, that's right. You're right. So, oh, yeah. my God. What? Oh, my God. That sucks. I'm going to be traveling on business that night. Oh. What? Oh, no. no For no, real. No. <laughs> well, like, get on your phone or something. <sighs> wow. Call in sick. Gosh. I can't fly. Oh, that's unfortunate, dude. I'll figure a way out. I'm gonna, I'll probably get to where I need to be at like midnight on Monday evening. Oh man! Do you, do you have Do you have Disney Go on your like phone or tablet? No, but I will not miss this. I guarantee. You can't miss this. We got to talk about it. Yeah, we get back it's together uh, next Tuesday to record yeah. our thoughts on that. So. That will come out. Um, our thoughts of, of Heroes of Mandalore will drop in your podcast feed next Wednesday. Can't wait for also, that. Actually, you know what, guys? Uh, I'll tell you right off the bat that I, I probably won't be back. A dagger, a killer. A dagger in the heart of the podcast. Well, <laughs> well, let's leave it on a on a precarious note. I'm gonna. We'll we'll try and figure something out. But uh... well, here's what you can do, Corey. Uh, if you're feeling adventurous, which I suggest you give this a shot, you can try to figure out how to record a quick little voice clip into your phone, and then email me that voice clip, and I'll be happy to put that into the show. So at least we have your thoughts. Or send me an email, and we'll include your thoughts that way. And don't forget your punctuation. <laughs> We'll figure it out. <laughs> also, uh, I sh- we should probably let them know that I'll be blogging, and I have a Twitter account where they can yeah, follow. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're 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 gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Yeah. Actually, we're gonna do that right now because we're gonna we got we gotta skedaddle out of here. So yeah, M. it's almost one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where can the good folks find you on Twitter and welcome you to the Tumbling Saber team, to the Star Wars Commonwealth, and to our fandom family? Um. Uh, they can find me at emailum, and I'm going to spell it because everyone gets it wrong. So it's emailum52 or DC, DC52. Anyway, E M A L L A M 52. And I'm going to express the M because people write N for the <laughs> long time. Three letters, front words, backwards. How hard can it be? And Got it. I think and I think I'm going to start up a Facebook page because I, I do write. And I also do a daily, I have a loft cat and I do a daily, you know, adventure. This is Kinder's life, that kind of thing. So I love it. It's really thank cool. Thank you. It's a really Someone cool, appreciates it's a, it. It's a really cool little thing you got going over there. I, I want a loft cat. <laughs> yeah, and actually, you know what? I don't think you can get any more. So I was thinking maybe we could do a petition and get 
some in production because it is the last season. It should be memorable. Those things if, should be on the shelves, no question. Yeah, and people have been asking me on the Star Wars Rebels group page, like, where do you get them? And I'm like, it's so heartbreaking to tell them there's no more. Yeah, you got to turn to eBay, and you're going to pay an arm and a leg. Yeah, so maybe we should start, like, a petition up and get Dave Filoni to, you know, notice it and get some in production. Yeah, pull some strings, Dave. Come on now. I can't even do it. Look at, he's Dave Filoni. But I'll keep, I'll keep you informed on, um, on the Facebook page once I do get around to it. Yeah. And plus, no, no, I can no, probably no do, pod, like, I could do a page of our name for your transmissions and go from there. Yeah. And, and then you have Tumbling Saber. But I have a little pod of followers in Facebook, so like, in the group because. I get at least 30 likes in the group for one little picture. So, Yeah, that's awesome. So email him 52 on the Twitter machine. Yep. Expect some, and ex, ex, expect some new friends on your Twitter feed very shortly. And, and, and I'm going to put Padawan of the Commonwealth. <laughs> Fair uh, enough. Because I bet you on the EG, I'm, I'm probably the youngest member on the team in the whole thing. Probably. Probably you've got I'm some competition, but yes, you are. You're. You might. You might be the junior member. And I'm the here. only girl. And I'm the only girl, right? Right. Nah. Uh, well, now let's. There's nope. your wife. We have. We have. No, we we got Ash. Ash. Oh, Ash over oh. at Skyhoppers. We gotta get in contact. We gotta get in contact, man. Yeah, oh. she's gonna love you. Trust me. <gasps> We're just talking. We'll, 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 we'll get you two on the on a round table, a TSW round table. Yeah, sure. That would be a lot of fun. I think. All and- Star Wars. Corey, in, in in thinking that every episode might be somebody's first, where can they find you on Twitter? Yeah, give me a sec. <clears throat> it's Chopper Chop rules. rules with a Z. There you go. And you can find me at Tumbling Saber on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come say hi. Come come meet the team. Come say hi. Yeah, dude, uh, I'm I'm super happy to have you on board. Yeah, this is we're gonna have a, a fun season podcasting about rebels. That that is oh, for sure. No, we're gonna tighten it up a bit too. This is our first episode. We haven't, uh, you know, hey, it's we're, gonna work, tighten we're working up. through the kinks. We have we have we have some patient friends here. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna put up with us as we we streamline this. And uh, well, yeah, we'll we'll get it in line. And listen, people listen to us long enough. We we're kind of known to go on and on, which we have we've gotten very few complaints about. So hopefully everybody's enjoyed our rebels season four prelude well yeah first episode like beginning of season four so it's like the first pancake right you always get rid of the first pancake it's never it's never a good one (laughs) it's it's impossible to do it in a short time frame when you know it's such a big deal rebels it is a big deal All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great weekend. I can't believe we're already at the end of the week here. Um, Enjoy your weekends. Hump day. Hump day. (laughs) And we'll we'll talk to you guys. It's it. it, Well, it is now. It won't be when they hear this. Oh, gotcha. (laughs) The magic of podcasting. (laughs) All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. Send us your feedback. Let us know what you think, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Woo.